And we've seen this before. We've all heard of the Industrial Revolution when there were times when factory workers were replaced by robots. This has happened before and it's happening again. But they weren't really replaced by robots. They were replaced by people who knew how to work with robots. Same thing with AI. Nowadays, jobs are, is a matter of doing the same job, but with AI assistance and knowing what the tools are. So there's a huge emphasis on education, on retooling, reskilling, and learning what these jobs and how they're now practiced. How will AI shape the future of work? This is a question that I get a lot in the uh, seminars and uh, meetups that I give. And the short answer is it's going to kill a lot of jobs <laughs> and it's going to create a lot more. As a matter of fact, it is projected that by the end of the decade, there's going to be a job gap of 85 million that's demand increase over supply. In other words, there's not going to be enough tech jobs to the tune of 85 million. Uh, and that is because the jobs are changing. And we've seen this before. We've all heard of the Industrial Revolution when there were times when factory workers were replaced by robots. This has happened before and it's happening again. But they weren't really replaced by robots. They were replaced by people who knew how to work with robots. Same thing with AI. Nowadays, jobs are, is a matter of doing the same job, but with AI assistance and knowing what the tools are. So there's a huge emphasis on education, on retooling, reskilling, and learning what these jobs and how they're now practiced with AI, whether you are uh, in law as a paralegal or as an attorney even, or in healthcare or in the hospitality business, the new jobs are AI-enabled jobs. So it's, it's just about using the new tool and knowing how to use that new tool in your uh, present environment. What kind of jobs will AI impact the most? For example, a lot of jobs that require any kind of data entry, anything where there is potential for human error, those are the kinds of jobs that AI is going to go for first, because by ensuring that a um, an algorithm is able to take accurate data in intake forms and ensure that those get, for lack of a better word, filed somewhere or sent to the ap appropriate area in the workflow of the business, um, AI is, is absolutely uh, dominating those jobs and, and doing a much better job. Intake forms, for example, uh, for uh, for health or customer service jobs where it requires uh, the ability to chat with a friendly person on the other end. AI actually has been proven to do even better than a human at that because it's able to uh, analyze subtleties in the uh, conversation and respond appropriately. Now, of course, we lose that human touch. But that being said, when it comes to very kind of low level customer service uh, positions or data entry positions or anything that requires just very repetitive rote work, frankly, the kind of work that we humans tend to dread uh, doing, that is what AI is, uh, is, is going to replace first. Uh, you know, it, 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 of course, your robotics is a whole other aspect of AI that is also going to continue to replace certain things. There's a, a whole bunch of venture capitalists that's now going into, you know, using robotics and AI for automating things like fast food, fast food industry. But as far as in the in any specific organization or company, it's going to be kind of a, your your most low level jobs are at the most risk because those are the kinds of positions that or those are the kinds of tasks that can be handed off to an algorithm and automated and have potential for less error. Now, new jobs that are going to be replacing the old jobs are all going to be essentially jobs where you are using AI as part of the job, AI assisted. There's a concept we always talk about when it comes to use in, of AI in, in everyday life, which is the human in the loop. We always want to ensure that we don't ever hand off uh, a job only to a machine without having a human in the loop. Well, the new jobs are going to require for that human to understand what AI is doing behind the scenes and be able to validate the result and work with it. One example is even in the field, for example, of dentistry, where a dentist will use AI tools to be able to analyze different places in a patient's mouth based on algorithms. Oh, they're more likely to have, uh, you know, this disease here based on this, or take a look at that. Um, and this, these are essentially AI assisted. You're using AI, but you're still going to have uh, a dentist. I would rather go to a dentist that uses an x-ray machine that it picks up on, you know, different uh, variances and, and is able to point those out than one who does not. But I still want my dentist to be able to be the one that tells me what's going on. 
and kind of make the final say. In any other positions, there's going to be a whole slew of different new titles for people that are working with AI. For example, there's a whole new job called prompt engineering. And prompt engineering is really a fancy term for how do you talk with an AI agent? How do you uh, get it to do exactly what you want it to do with as few uh, requests as possible? Because all these requests take a lot of uh, resources on the back end. So that's called prompt engineering. AI is not just going to create jobs in specifically in the tech sector. AI is going to create jobs for a whole uh, bunch of other people, lawyers who are now going to have to figure out how the law applies to AI algorithms. And they'll need to understand how AI works in order to do that, in order to to help uh, review and and create new laws. Legislators, same deal. They're going to have to learn how AI works so they can do that. There's a whole ethics has now become sexy again, dare I say. In other words, because of the transformative power of AI and how it is now, uh, you know, demanding a lot of uh, venture capital uh, money and, and creating new tools every day, ethics has become the name of the game, especially when we talk about data privacy. So as a result, there's a whole bunch of new jobs now that are going to be created in terms of how do we ascertain whether a model is using data properly, uh, whether a company is using data properly, whether the mo- a model is using that data ethically. In the field of ethics, that's a whole big field now. Ethics of AI is, uh, is, a, is a big one. And that has also fueled a lot of jobs in education as well, Uh, not just in terms of teaching the technology in uh, education and knowing that, but also in terms of using these tools in education. So in other words, you use AI algorithms, AI models to help with create lesson plans, to help understand where a curriculum might have gaps, where at certain lessons, perhaps with AI, you can actually find out how well that lesson plan helped the students in the class and how we can improve. So this is AI assisted education. And uh, we talk about using AI in education. Now, of course, All of these use cases are uh, being debated right now in terms of how do we best do that and how do we build a framework around doing that so that we can do it ethically uh, and and, uh, aid teachers in the right way and preserve privacy um, and ensure that the data is used ethically as well. So all of these uh, are new jobs that AI essentially has uh, enabled in society. And it's just going to take reskilling, retooling, and learning uh, about the technology in those various fields and finding where your niche is in that. I have actually a list of like 26 new jobs. I created a list of 26 new jobs that AI would create. And it was all of these different names like prompt engineer, you know, uh, facial analysis engineer, sentiment analysis. That's another thing. So these are all jobs that are uh, essentially developer jobs, but it's uh, jobs that require you to learn how to work with these algorithms to help fine tune them and improve them uh, so that they can serve us better in the future. What can leaders do to prepare for the shift in AI? Number one, they themselves need to learn about this technology. Um, It's going to affect every facet of business and, and, and in even our you know everyday lives. Leaders absolutely need to learn at, at least enough to understand how AI works, what it can do for their organization. And of course, I always harp on this point, which is ensuring that uh, how, how do we use it ethically? Because it has now become a part of, uh, of, of our daily lives. And in business, we are constantly using it to uh, improve workflows and to automate certain tasks that a human would be quite a bottleneck to do. Understanding how they work, understanding that their statistical models is very important. I'd also say that for leaders, it's important for them to use it. I would encourage business leaders not to be afraid to use these tools themselves and try them out for themselves. But Education is number one. And I think the second thing that leaders need to be mindful of is not just educating themselves, but ensuring that their organization is also educated on these tools. As I mentioned, the AI is not going to replace jobs, replace people. It's going to create new jobs that are now AI enabled. So an organization that reskills their own staff, reskills their own people, for the use of AI is going to do great things because now they're ahead of the game. They're taking their organization and ensuring that they do what they do, but now with the empowerment of AI assistance. So leaders shouldn't just educate themselves, but also ensure that their organization is educated as well. And that can be done through training programs. It can be done through seminars, inviting speakers to talk about what AI can do, and also promoting the adoption 
of tools. We shouldn't be afraid of using these tools. We should just ensure that we use them properly and ethically. And one of the other things that I think leaders can really benefit from is learning how to incorporate AI into their organization, both from a strategic perspective, how do we how do they actually use it for their business, their workflows, but also from a ensuring that it, that it is contained. In other words, if you're going to use it, you know what those uses are and you ensure that it, it doesn't get rampantly used in a way that is um, not with a kind of begin with the end in mind idea where you just, uh, we would call shadow IT, where you let users just start using these tools willy-nilly without any proper guidelines. In a nutshell, educating leaders can educate themselves, ensure that their organization is educated, and ensure that they put proper guidelines for the use of the agents within their organization.